Well, good morning everyone and welcome to this uh, first Bishop's Cathedral service of the year. I'm in the cathedral, sadly most of you are not, but um, you're very welcome to the service and especially for those of you who have joined Year 7 or Year 12 um, who won't have been to join us for one of these big communal events in St Mary's in Salisbury before, you're very welcome. Normally we've been here for uh, once a month during the year and we will try to repeat that um, through this academic year as well to give you a feeling for what life is really like in more, more normal times at school. It is the chance for all of us to be together um, whether it's actually physically in the cathedral or together listening and having a similar experience and that is pretty important in the current circumstances. The realisation comes when we're all together of the size of the school. It's very difficult to appreciate that but when the diagonal path fills with people coming over for the Bishop's Cathedral service you suddenly get a feeling for the nature of the beast, the organic size of the educational institution here in the close and it really is a pretty impressive site and of course that's always the way it's been because John Wordsworth set up the school a century and a quarter ago to be a centre of learning in the close and to have that shared experience of faith and of education in Salisbury and still it is today and we are all a part of that and I think it's important to remember just how fortunate we are to be able to come to use a magnificent building like this to join our school together once a month or so. So this morning, this creation tide, take a little time as you watch the service to think about what has been and to think about what is to come and to think about what your part in the next year or so of this great school might be.
prayer for creation tide. Holy God, earth and air and water are your creation and every living thing belongs to you. You teach us with stories of seeds and weeds and harvest time. You call us to accept your word and bear much fruit. Give us the will and the courage to simplify the way we live, to reduce the energy we use, to share the resources you provide, and to bear the cost of change. Forgive our past mistakes and send us your spirit with wisdom in present controversies and vision for the future to which you call us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 104 
Bless the Lord, O my soul. O my Lord, you are very great. You are clothed with honour and majesty, wrapped in light as with argument. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers. Fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they flee. flee. At the sound of your thunder they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down the valleys to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. You may make springs gush forth into the valleys, they flow before the hills. Giving drink to every wild animal, the wild asses quench their thirst. By the streams the birds of the air have their habitation, they sing among the branches. From your lofty abode you water the mountains, the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants to, for the people to use. To bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine and bread to strengthen the human heart. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet, I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow, is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. This is the word of the Lord. Being outside in the countryside is a great place to start with creation time. This is where we have most sense of things growing, of what we would normally call the natural world. Where we see what old fashioned harvest festival was focused on. It was all about the crops, it was about uh, the animals, the, uh, the sheep we've got here, cows, whatever it might be. It was about a heartfelt sense of thanksgiving that there was going to be food to see them through the winter and they would live another year. Whereas those days are clearly gone, we're more interested in looking at the shelves in Tesco's than the, uh, the fields for our sense of having food. But this harvest, for the first time in my life, we've experienced empty shelves in Tesco's. What a very weird feeling it was to walk round and see empty shelf after empty shelf. So let's just cast our minds back for those who actually went into the shops and saw that, or we'll just remember the conversations. There was a sense of worry about food. There were confined flour, uh, there were no toilet rolls. So the starting point for harvest has to be thankfulness. And this is the closest we've uh, come to having to really think about our food since the Second World War ended 75 years ago. But another very important aspect of Creation Tide is moving beyond that thankfulness to a response. This is what God has given us, how are we going to look after it? Now our speaker at Prize Giving, Right Honourable Claire O'Neill, reminded us of the major issues we have to address to find new ways of living which put us in better harmony with the rest of nature. We need a shift in mindset. But I speak today to a group who are some of the most intelligent of your generation in the world. You are just the sort of people who can do the creative thinking necessary to move us in the right direction. Lots of you are doing science A-levels and can later work in engineering and technology and related fields. And there are some great solutions being worked on at present. Finding new ways of doing old things, so JCB, an excellent example, as they shift from diesel engines to electric powered by either standard lithium batteries or, for some of their really big diggers, uh, hydrogen fuel cells. There's a project being developed uh, to run a hydrogen fuel cell powered ferry between Cardiff and Bristol, rethinking use of water as a means of transport uh, which surrounds our country and is underused. So at a much smaller scale, something for now for you. You can explore important ideas like repair to keep things going longer instead of throwing them away like developing the skills learned in DT and applying them to the huge number of gadgets around our homes. 
You could learn how to use charity shops for clothing. Be creative, don't just look at what it is now. Look at what it can become when you apply your talents to it. Now, these are clearly challenging times, but challenge is what we thrive on in Bishop Wordsworth School. When we're confronted by climate change, our response should not be fear, but a motivation to use all the God-given talents we have in this school to find solutions. Our intercessions are led by Joe and Ben. Help us to be still in your presence, O oh God. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for all that you have created in the sea, sky and land. We thank you for all the gifts you have given us. And we pray that we can use them to help others and the planet you made to be our home. We're sorry for all the terrible things we have done to pollute the earth and kill the life you have created in it. And we pray that you will guide us to a time without war or suffering and a time where we can all protect the gift that you have given us. Lord, we hope you can aid us in settling conflicts worldwide. Conflicts such as those in Yemen or Syria, which have claimed hundreds of thousands of lives. We also pray that you can help us aid those in need, such as those without food or homes. We especially ask you to help us with the coronavirus pandemic. Help us to be sensible and do as both the government and medical professionals guide. Help researchers around the world to find a vaccine and help everyone to protect each other in the meantime. Amen. Dear Lord, we ask for your blessing upon our school during this challenging time. Despite all that is going on, let it be a place where everyone can learn well and feel safe and happy. At this time, we particularly pray for the leadership team and ask you to give them wisdom as they work on keeping the school safe. We lift up to you all of those who are working towards exams at the end of this year. We pray you give them peace and the strength to do the best that they can. Lastly, we pray for all those who are new to the school and we pray that you help them settle in, make new friends and adapt to this new way of learning. In Jesus' name, Amen.